Welcome to Microfinance Podcast, bringing microfinance to your screen. This episode is produced by Microsave together with Showcap Exchange. Hello, we appreciate you checking out this episode. One of the major goals of Microfinance Podcast is to collect interviews with leading microfinance practitioners. While discussing the lending cycle, we invited Dick Turner to share with us his tricks of the trade in loan analysis. Dick Turner has been involved in making loans and training credit staff for well over 30 years. Much of that experience was spent in the United States, but also in a number of foreign countries, primarily in Eastern Europe. Uh, I don't want to be too simplistic about it, but I think of, of lending as three intersecting circle circles. One circle could be labeled market, another circle could be labeled management, and a third circle I label mathematics, or the, the mathematically analytical features of a loan request. But they're not three circles individually. They, they interact and they kind of move in a three-dimensional way back and forth so that the, love, the areas of intersection are greater and then a little smaller and then they're back to some intermediate point in between. Unfortunately, I think many lenders, particularly people just beginning their careers, tend to approve loans in their mind at a very early stage based upon mathematics or sometimes based upon a rather simplistic view of the market. People hardly ever, though, base an early approval, although they might base an early decline, upon qualities of management. And management, to me, is an extraordinarily important factor in making loans to small and medium-sized enterprises. I'll return to management in a minute. It's easy to look at a financial statement and say to ourselves, well, the balance sheet looks pretty good. It looks like everything is kind of in order. And what we tend to mean by that, in my opinion, is nothing strikes us as being unusual on the balance sheet. There's cash, there's accounts receivable that seem to be collected in a normal amount of time. There's machinery and equipment. There are accounts payable that do not seem extraordinarily large. And, oh, there's a nice base of equity there. So the company has a nice net worth. And then we go on to the profit and loss statement. And if we, for the last two, maybe three years, see nice progression, sales have increased. Not too much, though, but nicely. The gross margin seems to have stayed within about the same bounds. Expenses don't seem to have grown faster than sales. It's all very nice. And at that point, I would submit, we have become, if we haven't approved the loan in our minds, we have become very favorably disposed to this loan. And it's as if um, I didn't wear glasses. I'd become favorably disposed to the loan and I then put on a pair of lenses through which everything else in my analysis would be refracted. It would be refracted through an optimistic lens. We then are in danger of thinking that uh, our applicant may be better than his competitors. Our applicant is usually the best source of knowledge about his or her competitors and we should see where we think our applicant stands in relation to those competitors. For instance, if historically, after our detective work, it appears that our applicant has a much smaller market share than his primary three or four competitors, his profit margins do not seem to be probably quite as strong as his competitors, but his expense structure may resemble theirs, even though they are larger. And that may all be okay. That may may not mean that we decline this loan at all. But if then we look at our applicant's projections, and voila, she shows margins that are better than any of her competitors, sales growth that will be much higher, 
10, 20 percent than theirs, an expense structure that is actually lower than theirs. I'm not saying decline the loan immediately, but this should send out warning signals to us. Small business people are always optimistic. They probably wouldn't be in business if they weren't optimistic. But if we, we bankers and lenders, are basing our decision upon a set of projections that is quite at variance with history and reality, maybe unrealistically so, then we are taking a big chance with our approval. How about thinking about the applicant's target market, especially if it's a new market? Perhaps they've had a little bit of experience with that market in a prior job or company, but it's still a new market for them. It's very important to test to the extent we can, and it's not always to a great extent, but to the extent we can, how accessible that market is. Can our applicant reach that market with a minim minimum of expense? For instance, if it's a market that relies to some degree upon high technology or the knowledge of high technology, does our applicant's workforce have the expertise to produce a highly technological product? How about the sales force? Sales do not just happen automatically. Does the applicant have a salesman or saleswoman who can approach these high-tech customers, as it were, speak to them with the adequate amount of knowledge required, and convince them to switch some of their business to our applicant? Because make no mistake about it, if you are financing a company that's entering a new market, every dollar, ruble, pound, escudo of sales they get in that new market is taking away sales from someone else, someone who is already established in that market. And our applicant, your applicant, may be able to do that, but it does not happen automatically. In other words, don't take the most optimistic analysis you can. Don't take the most pessimistic either, but put it in the middle. So if the industry average for the gross margin in this field is 50%, and the applicant's ability to repay you depends upon a 55% gross margin, you may still be able to approve the loan, but you should be able to see that something specific is going to happen in that applicant's operation as a result of either your loan or some other discernible change that will enable it to achieve a 55% a gross margin, especially if it never has been historically able to do so.